All right, well. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Wealth in Christ Podcast, a show we encourage people to find spiritually and financial balance in their life through the abundance of grace of God. On the podcast today, we have Dr. Ayomi De Okunlari, who's a passionate Christ follower, formerly trained psychology, who used her education and gift and talent of God's kingdom through biblical counseling. She's passionate about pointing people to the truth and personally in Christ, Jesus Christ. They may operate in fullness and freedom of God and purpose for their life. She is currently a host of a podcast titled Master Plan Marriage, using the scriptures to draw men and women to marriage that thrive according to creation purpose. She is grateful to God to being a wife and a mother of two. So thanks for coming here and being on the show, Dr. Ayami Day. Thank you for having me. It's Dr. Ayomi Day. Okay, Larry. <laughs> it's all good. So sorry, I apologize. No worries. <laughs> Before we get started, many of you may be wondering why we're talking about relationship and marriage. But truth to be told, many of us want to get married. And with having a great business and career, you need to have great partners. Because having bad partners or partners that are not equally yoked as us could destroy you, whether in career or in business. So it's important mm-hmm. to understand God's purpose for marriage and relationship. So therefore, we have Dr. Ayomi Day, Ayomi Day <laughs> who is... A professional, she teaches people about marriage. Like she has a, a podcast called Master Plan Marriage, where she uses scriptures to draw men and women to marriage. So thank you for being here again. It's a pleasure. So the first question I will start with: Should all people desire to get married? Should all people desire to get married? Well, I'm going to take us straight to the Bible on that um, because it's not about what I think. Um, it's about what the Lord has to say. And so when we look at marriage, um, God doesn't require it. Jesus didn't require it. And in fact, in a conversation that he has with his disciples, they're talking about um, divorce in particular. And it says in Matthew 19, verses 10 to 12. So allow me to take it to the scripture. Um, it says, the disciples said to him, if such is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry saying, if you want to, um, if you find yourself wanting to divorce, then it's better that you don't even marry. But he said to them, not everyone can receive this saying, but only those to whom it is given. For there are eunuchs who have been so, who have been so from birth, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by men, and there are eunuchs who have been made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Let the one who is able to receive this, receive it. Okay, so... Um, without getting into too much detail, when he's talking about eunuchs, it's really the idea of being celibate um, and being able to refrain. And he's saying, you know, there's those who are able to do that from birth. There are those that um, by, by choice, they have um, done this or um, have been in positions where they're required to be in this way. Um, but whoever is able to do it, let them do it. And so if you're able to not be married, so so be it. Go ahead and not be married. Um, I like what my brother Apostle Paul likes to say um, in in First Corinthians. He says he gives his opinion about it. And he's very clear that this is his own opinion. When Paul writes, he, he's clear of what is coming from the Lord and what is his opinion. And you'll hear it. Um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 6 to 7, it says, Now as a concession, not a command, I say this. I wish that all were as I myself am, but each has his own gift from God, one of one kind and one of another. And he's talking about being single. He himself is single without a wife. Um, and he is wishing that if you can be like him, go ahead and be like him. But know that both types, whether you are single or whether you are married, is a gift from God. And so that's so important for us to know. And then one more scripture coming from, again, Apostle Paul in the same passage, chapter 7 of 1 Corinthians, first seven, verse 17. It says, only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him and to which God has called him. This is my rule in all the churches. So I love that. I love that, past, that Apostle Paul 
is highlighting that regardless of where you are, we're to lead a life that we've been called, that the Lord himself has assigned us to and to which God has called us. And so to remember that we've all been assigned specific assignments here on this earth. We have a general assignment, all of us, to glorify God um, as he is our creator and we are his created. But then we have unique assignments that he's distributed to each one of us that's going to look very different. And so you can have the desire to get married, but know that it is not a requirement and it's not something that a right you know, it's not something that God promises that this is going to be your, your fate. It is all what he's decided, um, but he's given us free will. So I don't want to get that confused. He's given us free will, but he's not made it a requirement that in order to serve him and to live out your life to your fullest, that you have to be married. So you can desire it, but know that that is a guarantee. That, 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 uh, what you said is wrong for all churches to yeah. marry the way they do and like enforce it that they do. Would I say it's wrong the way that churches sort of force it? Yeah. Uh, you know, what I find is that culture may not with Christianity. And we have to be very careful. Even Paul, you know, the culture of the day, he wasn't ruled by it. First and foremost is what the Bible says. We have to be uh, led by the word, by scripture. And if Jesus and if God didn't insist on it, in fact, Jesus says it, it in that case, it's better that you don't marry. And he himself wasn't married. Then we as a people have to make sure that we are aligning our opinions and our thoughts and even our desires with the word of God. And so don't get me wrong. I have two young daughters. Do I want them to be married? Sure. I think marriage is a beautiful uh, gift from God, but I would never force anyone because it's better to not be married than to force yourself into a situation that you'll later on regret, you know, especially if it's not in the will of God. And I'd much rather be single than to find myself in a situation that I put myself into that's not the best situation, you know? That, that's exactly right. Now, what are the advantage of singlehood? I love that question. What are ways that we can take advantage, one can take advantage. First of all, do just that, see it as an advantage. Take it, take advantage, take advantage of your singlehood. And that doesn't, that's not a message said often because it's, it's almost as if it's a waiting period to get to the other side of what's better. But who said, who told you that it was going to be better on the other side? If your gift, and let me highlight that some more. Your gift is singlehood. Embrace it and with it. If it's for a season, if it's a gift for a lifetime, take advantage of it. Shift the perspective, shift your mindset because the way that you think will determine the way that you feel will also impact the way that you act, okay? And so we want to... I want to encourage those who are single to let God be your priority. Invest in that relationship. It will surely pay out. And not that that's your motivation, um, but it will, it's, it's always going to be a benefit for you to have a deep relationship with your creator, God Almighty. Uh, let me, let, let's go to Isaiah chapter 54, verse five. It says, for your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name, and the Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. The God of the whole earth he is called. God is letting you know, I, I am your husband. Now, let's not get caught up, even for guys. He's saying he is your, your, your one and only, okay? It's not, you know, <laughs> minds can go places, but this is God we're talking about, and he's not, yes, we attribute the word he 
to him, but he's not like man. He's above man, right? So he's not limited to male characteristics. He has and both and, right? Because if women are made in the image of God and men are also made in the image of God, then God is superior to gender. You understand? And yeah. so we don't want to get caught up in that. But for the, the lack of better words, you know, the English language is very limited. All languages are limited to a certain degree. We can't describe who God is. So for lack of a better word, he describes himself as, um, as our husband, the maker, God of the universe. It wants to be in relationship with us. It's a beautiful thing. He's saying, remember that. Remember who I am, know me, know me. You know, the Bible talks about to know. Adam knew Eve, and that's an intimacy. And I have a friend who loves to play on words and she would say intimacy, into me see, right? Like that's deep, you know? And God is calling us to relationship, into me see. Like look into me, God, study me, God, right? And God is also saying, into you, I see. Who knows us better than God Almighty? Into us, he sees our innermost parts and he loves us all the same. Thank you, God, because if your friend knew what you were thinking, mm, they might side-eye you a bit. If my husband knew some of the thoughts I had, he might side-eye me. But God who knows us in and out still loves us. No judgment. <laughs> well, no final judgment, but... <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, what you want to do right now in, in terms of, let me give you some practical, practical steps as someone who is single, practical steps that they can take, right? One, work on, um, or better yet, allow God to shape you to be the husband or wife worth having, mm. you know, singles were so busy looking for that perfect husband and you have your list and you wrote it down because somewhere someone told you to write down your list. I, I'm not hating. I, I wrote my list down too. Right. But at the same time, are you taking inventory in yourself? Are you allowing God to take inventory of you and saying, are you the wife or the husband that you um, ought to be? Are you preparing yourself to be the spouse that is worth being with? And so there's, there's a lot of opportunity there to allow God to work on you. And it comes with tests and trials because there's no um, growth without pain, without fire, without tests, without trials. So allow God to do the work in you. So that's one. And then I would say, spend time with couples. Send, spend time with married folk. See how they interact. You know, see how they move. See how they operate. Operate. Ask questions respectfully. You know, you don't need to be all up in their business, but ask questions. Um, you know, and this is this is what you can do with trusted individuals, trusted couples who you you've developed relationship with, almost like a mentorship. You know, you want to know how to be a husband, study a husband. You want to know how to be a wife, study a wife, and see how they're doing. Um, you can even see how parents relate to their children if that's something that you desire. You can offer to babysit and see what that's like. There are ways that you can study, do some research, gather information to what real life looks like as a married individual. So um, I think those are the two things that I would say practically. Uh, but first and more foremost, it's really changing that mindset, changing that perspective and seeing it as an advantage because it's something that you should never get back, right? The only way if you were married and then become single is if you're divorced and you don't want that, or God forbid, you lose your spouse through death. But if everything goes with the way that you want, right? You don't ever expect to go back into singlehood. You'll never get that time again. So take advantage of it while you can. Mm. That was, that was. Uh, it's funny you mentioned mentorship because a lot of times, People don't put themselves in place of those who already experienced those um, trials or events that they want to experience. I like, I like the fact that you mentioned that. But uh, I want to ask a question. How important is mindset? You emphasize that a lot, you know, the mindset of seeing that as an advantage. So how important is that? So, you know, that's the part where my background in psychology 
coupled with my uh, relationship and growth in Christ. That's where it comes from, because in psychology, we are taught that the, the thoughts affect the behavior and affect the feelings. They all relate with one another. The way that you think is going to affect how you feel and how you feel affects how you behave, how you react, what you do, what you say. It all works together to form the person. And when I think about the biblical side, and you know, this, there's no secular and spiritual, it's all spiritual. <laughs> but specifically moving into what the Bible says, talks about um, as a man think it, so is he, you know? So there, it, it talks about um, being mindful of the heart. Well, out of, out of the heart is what flows, flows wickedness, you know, uh, or goodness. Like what you, so they all, it's showing that it all interacts, right? It all relates. So if we know that, if we know that things start in the mind before it's uttered out of the mouth, it's a thought, right? We have to make sure we're aware of our mindset. And what are you feeding yourself? Because that, that affects what you think. What are you listening to? What are you watching? Who are you listening to? Who has your ear, right? Who has your attention? Who, what are you reading? What are you taking in visually? Social media, um, you know, this person's opinion or that person's opinion, rather than what does God have to say? That's where your, your eyes should be fixed. Where, what does the word have to say? What does God have to say specifically to you? Are you spending time, quiet time with the Lord to hear him directly and have him, his thoughts outweigh the thoughts of, of the world his his word having the final say you know where what is feeding you what are you taking in that is affecting your mindset and no no without a shadow of doubt that everything that you take in impacts you in one way or the other you choose to receive it or you reject it but it's having an impact that, 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 how did you know your husband was how did I know? Your husband was the right person for you. Oh, <laughs> how did I know? Well, full disclosure, I was in a relationship for five years I had no business being in. And at that time, I was also um, wa walking, slowly walking with God. I had grown up knowing about him. It's a different thing of knowing him and actually knowing about him and actually knowing him. And so I was in transition of actually knowing God and really giving my life over to him. And the Lord had been speaking, get out of that relationship, get out. And I was being disobedient, right? Because we think we know better than God. Dare we say that? Uh, but our actions show that. And so I got to a point where the Lord was heavy on my heart. And I, and I finally said that enough is enough. And then I, I bring that up to say, from that point, I became laser eye focused on the Lord. Whatever you want, God. When I surrendered, I fully surrendered. I let go of everything that I held on to and wanted nothing to do with anything that was not of God. And I plunged myself into the word I was doing ministry. I was so focused on God. I wasn't looking anywhere else. He was all, he was my all in all still is, but you know, it was just that it was, it was just me and God and we were rolling together and I wanted nothing to do with anything else. Then my, uh, you know, my husband at that time, obviously, um, comes in the picture. He comes into the picture and, how did I know that he was the one? Because I said, I wasn't looking for anyone. So I said, Lord, if this is not of you, take him away. <laughs> I don't want a distraction. I said I was about you. I meant it. So I knew for one, I hadn't gone looking. This, this came to me. I didn't go looking. And I think, um, you know, that's really important as a, especially as a woman, but when we did start talking, he came to the church that I was serving at and uh, wanted to be a part of 
serving. And I love that, that he was ready to be on board, but it was, that was a working relationship that then turned into a friendship. But I got to see him in the elements of doing the works, the, the work of the Lord and seeing his own passion for Christ. So that was obviously a plus. And then I joke, uh, we laugh a lot about our first date um, where he hit me with like the 20 questions. And anyone knows me, I'll fire right back. Like, oh, is that what we're doing? What's your five-year plan? Well, what's your five-year plan? You know. <laughs> I was just really surprised of all the questions that were coming my way on the first date. But that was the moment when here I, I could hear and sense how serious he was. We're not here to play games, right? We want something. We both want something that is going to be forever. We want something meaningful. We want something with God in the center of it. And we're not playing games. And you know, I, yeah, I didn't come expecting to answer those questions, but I was moved and I was impressed that that was the level that he was at. And I respected that. And from then on, I knew, okay, this, this is serious. Um, and then I would say three months in, we knew, we knew that this was going to happen, but we thought everyone would think we were crazy to want to get married three months in. So we <laughs> waited about a year um, before making plans. We didn't actually get married until three years after we met, but we knew very early on um, that this was certainly of the Lord. We both weren't looking for something and um, that God had his hand on it. So that's what, what sealed the deal. <laughs> that, that, that is one of a story. That's one kind of a story. <laughs> That leads into my next question. How would you encourage someone who's looking to find a partner in Christ but doesn't seem like it's a realistic thing right now? I would say what, what is realistic? Um, and I think that's, for me, that's getting back to the mindset. Like, why does it it's not seem realistic? Is it because of time? Do you feel like time is running out? That's what I, I initially thought. And I, I thought about the scripture that talks about um, the way that God views, views time very different from us, that a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day to God. Knowing that he's beyond time, time doesn't impact God's movement. <laughs> we are affected by time and we see time very differently, but God is not moved by time. And so you know, what's, what, what, what is realistic? What are your standards? Um, no, whose standards, I would say, whose standards are we going by in terms of um, it being difficult to find a partner in Christ? And what did God promise? So I would have these things in mind. And I would say, is God enough? And I'm dealing with the mindset and it might not seem like I'm answering the question because it really, I'm taking it two steps back for that question. What is your mindset? Is God enough that if you never find this partner that you so desire, is God enough? Do you have a nevertheless spirit? And that nevertheless faith, that comes from the three Hebrew boys, right? Where they were going to be put in the furnace, in a burning hot furnace. And they said, we know our God can save us. That's not a question. Nevertheless, if he chooses not to, nevertheless, his will be done. Nevertheless, we're not going to deny him. So do you have a nevertheless faith that nevertheless, I will serve God. I will always worship God, regardless if this comes to pass. And if you can stand firm there, then you can be free. You can be free from the weight that can feel so heavy of, will I ever find someone? You can shift your mindset that says, Lord, you know that this is my desire. You know my heart inside and out. You know that that's what I want. Nevertheless, your will be done. Nevertheless, I will still worship you and serve you no matter what you do or you choose to do. I trust that you know best, 
for me. I'm not going to rely on what studies say and show that a woman needs to be married by this time so she can bear kids by this time. I'm not going to follow that. I'm not going to look at the, the what I call me search, right? You have research and then you have me search. You look around and you see what's going around and you base your, your research on that. So it's me search. What's going on in my life? Well, according to what I see in my surroundings, this person is married, this person married, there's no hope for me. No, what are you basing your, your evidence on? Are you going to rely on a God who is almighty, everlasting, can do anything and everything? Or are you going to rely on yourself? I mean, we know we fail, <laughs> we're not perfect, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. You're 100% right. That leads me to my next question. If you could speak to your old self or your younger self, you know, while you were single, what would you say? Ooh, that's a good question. What would I say? Oh, man. <laughs> you know, I would say hold fast to the Lord. He's got you, girl. He is with you. He is, don't you see, he still loves you. No matter what you've done, he will continue to love you. You just keep holding on to him. You keep trusting in him. He's got you. He has you in the palm of his, of his hands. He loves you more than anyone, anything, any man may promise, any you know ring may, may feel on your finger. <laughs> He loves you more than any of those things. And he is everlasting. And none of these things will last. Put your faith, put your trust, go wholeheartedly in him. And the earlier you do it, girl, the better. <laughs> well said. So I guess it will lead to my next question. So now you're married. So how have you, um, how long have you been married for? Excuse me. So I, we will be married nine years in June. It will be nine years in June. That's good. Congrats. Congrats. Thank you. Thank God. <laughs> when you get into this stage, you know, for those who will make it to the stage, how would you say is a key thing to continue to do? Which oh. to get married? Okay. I'll say two things. One, God has to be the center of it all. If he is not the center, you're missing out because it's, it's, it's not about you. And we're so, in this culture, in this day and age, there's so much me, me focus. It's not about you. It was never about you. It's about God. So your marriage is also not about you and your husband, not about you and your wife. It's about God. Give God the glory. Why do you forgive? Because God called you to. Not because your husband or wife deserved it. Not because they don't deserve it. But because God called you to. God is the center. You answer to God. You, your response to your husband, to your wife is because of your relationship with God. So let God be the center of your marriage and also to be the center of you as the individual. And then the second thing is communication. So many things could be resolved, just a bit of communication. Um, so that I think would be my two biggest pieces of advice. It was a pleasure having you. It was a Thank pleasure you. having you. Uh, when you wanted to close out on a word, you know, on singlehood and marriage, you know, anything that's on your heart. Mm. I would say be encouraged. Be encouraged wherever you are, whatever season you are. I always say we're dealing with the God of the universe who knows you. He knows you. Yes, you. <laughs> he sees you. He cares about you. He loves you with an everlasting love. Enter into his arms and receive of him. He has a gift of you. Receive it. Receive it. Don't ask questions like, don't worry. Believe, believe it. Believe that he wants to give it to you and receive it. And walk in him. That's the only way that you can find true joy. That's the only way that you can find clarity, um, peace. It can only be found in Christ and Christ alone. So 
yeah, take him at his word. Go all the way. Where can people find you to stay in touch with you? So I'm not a big social media person, um, but I have my podcast, Master Plan Marriage. And so you can email me at masterplanmarriage at gmail.com. And I will definitely get back to you. I love to hear from people. So, Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. I hope those who are listening, you guys definitely took some gems. But, um, depending on your season, I hope if you have any questions, you can reach out to 